All right, we want to start our Dhamma talk on the next section of the mindfulness of the four foundations of mindfulness. Second foundation is called uh, mindfulness of uh, feelings. We use the word feeling to denote both sensations and feelings. In the Western uh, psychological terms, when we use the word uh, feeling, they always uh, uh, understand it to mean uh, psychological or mental. When we say sensation, then uh, they understand it to be physical. Pali word for both is uh, Vedana, which uh, means both sensations and feelings. This section also is very short and simple, and therefore one might wonder what is there to be mindful of, because it is so simple. It says, uh, and how monk does a monk dwell contemplating feelings as feelings? So Buddha goes on to explain, a monk feeling, pl a pleasant feeling, he understands feeling a pleasant feeling. Who doesn't understand that? Anybody who, who feels something pleasant knows that it is pleasant. Similarly, when one uh, has a painful feeling, one knows that it is painful feeling. Of course, sometimes people can get confused with regard to uh, neither pleasant nor uh, painful feeling. But uh, these two feelings, naturally, people understand uh, without too much uh, explanation. And then there is another category of feeling called when one feels uh, feeling pleasant sensual feeling, feeling he feels feeling uh, pleasant sensual feelings. Feeling pleasant non-sensual feeling, he feels that he feels pleasant non-sensual feelings. Then feeling uh, painful feeling, uh, sensual painful feeling, he knows that it is sensual painful feeling. When he has uh, non-sensual painful feeling, he knows that it is non-sensual painful feeling. Similarly, when one has a uh, sensual feeling that is neither painful nor pleasant, he knows that. And the sensual, uh, the non-sensual feeling that is neither painful nor pleasant, he knows that. That is six kind of feelings. And Buddha has explained in various uh, places Sometimes he talks about two kinds of feelings, sometimes three kinds of feelings, sometimes six kinds of feelings, sometimes uh, 36 kinds of feelings, sometimes 108 kinds of feelings. Now, this is where the mindful meditator who contemplates on feeling should uh, deepen his or her insight into understanding what these categories of feelings are. In the first place, we must understand uh, uh, some uh, Pleasant feelings have 
greed as underlying tendency. Unpleasant feeling has anger or hatred as underlying tendency. Neither pleasant nor unpleasant feeling has delusion as an underlying tendency. Now, what is the Let us say, let us take, for instance, uh, six kind of feelings. What are the six kind of uh, three main feelings? Are pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. And for sometimes Buddha talk about five kind of feelings. They are uh, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral feelings, and uh, uh, pleasant, unpleasant. Uh, equanimous feelings, these are uh, psychological. They are called somanasa, domanasa, upekka. Somanasa is a pleasant mental feeling like happiness or joy. Unpleasant mental feeling is called domanasa and uh, neither pleasant nor unpleasant mental feeling is called upekka. And the physical feelings, sukha, dukkha, adukkha, masukha, that is pleasant, unpleasant, or neither pleasant, unpleasant physical feelings. So, beside this, there are uh, other feelings. Feeling normally arises dependent upon contact. And therefore, there are six contacts and six feelings. Six contacts are eye contacts, ear contacts, nose contact, tongue contact, body contact, and mind contact. These are the six contacts for, through six senses. And therefore, through the eye contact, there can arise pleasant sensation. And uh, when you come to the last section, Dhamma and Prasanna, you will see these six sense, senses generate uh, uh, 60 types of pleasures. So, you are not lack of pleasures, full of pleasure. People were wondering about uh, why don't we talk about pleasant sensation, pleasure and so forth. You will come across, we gradually, you know, leading up to that. So, um, people were impatient to hear about pleasant sensations and pleasure. You will wait and you can see how much pleasure we will have when we come to the last section. In this section, we, we stay with the categories of feelings. So, when we, when we see an object, there arises either pleasant sensation, or unpleasant sensation, or neutral sensation, depending on, not only on the object, but also on our own mental states. Sometimes even the pleasant object, normally pleasant objects, is supposed to generate pleasant feeling. Not necessarily. Sometimes very pleasant object can generate very unpleasant feeling. That means it is not the object that generates the pleasant to unpleasant neutral sensation, but also the mental state. For instance, you have very nice looking person 
and you may have a tremendous attraction to that person and that person has rejected you <laughs> and every time you see that person you get angry because the person rejected you insulted you belittled you <coughs> criticized you verbally attacked you although the person himself or herself appears to be very pleasant your eyes as soon as you come in contact with that person you remember the things that person has done to you and then very unpleasant sensation unpleasant feeling can arise so sometimes an unpleasant looking person may appear that person might have done something very wonderful for you physically verbally some kind of unforgettable service every time you see that person you will have a very pleasant memories or when somebody either pleasant or unpleasant you know apparently says it doesn't register in your mind at all anything because person has no relationship no connection nothing to you so you just happen to pass that moment without any major registration of memory or anything in your mind and there you will have a neither pleasant no unpleasant sensation however similarly when you hear a sound these three kind of feelings can arise pleasant unpleasant neutral when you uh, smell something pleasant unpleasant neutral sensation can arise when you taste something pleasant unpleasant neutral sensation can arise when you touch something pleasant unpleasant neutral sensation and when you remember something pleasant unpleasant neutral sensation can arise so through six senses you will have 18 kind of feelings isn't it pleasant unpleasant neutral from each sense <coughs> and also these pleasant unpleasant neutral sensations that arise through your eyes ears and so forth may have some greedy greed as underlying tendency if it is pleasant hatred as underlying tendency if it is unpleasant confusion as underlying tendency as it is if it is neither pleasant nor unpleasant that means when you see an object if it is pleasant naturally desire can arise and the desire arises because of the underlying tendency of greed of the pleasant sensation but and that is why that, anyway that is why it is called uh, a pleasant feeling uh what do you call sensual feeling sensual feeling pleasant feeling with underlying tendency of greed is called sensual pleasant feeling sometimes it is translated as sensual feeling but it is better to understand that as a feeling which has underlying tendency of greed and pain pain it is called samisa sukha samisa uh with uh pleasure 
or with the Amisa, Amisa, Samisa. Amisa means the material related to material, sensual objects. This pleasure arises, and therefore it is called Samisa Sukha, sensual feeling. Uh, with the underlying tendency of greed. Then, because of the senses, six senses, there arise uh, six kind of pleasant sensation which are not, which do not have underlying tendency of greed. The pleasant sensation that does that arises without underlying tendency of greed is called niramisa, non sensual feeling. When sensation arises through the senses without hatred, that is called niramisa dukkha. That means hatred is. Uh, there is no hatred as underlying tendency. Rather, it has uh, loving friendliness as underlying tendency. The sensation that arises through senses, that is neither pleasant nor unpleasant, will not have underlying tendency of confusion. Therefore, that is called niramisa adukka masukha, or neither pleasant no unpleasant sensation. Now let us look at these sensations once again. How does you now you understand how pleasant, unpleasant, sensual uh, sensation can arise through senses? You understand that. As I said, when you see an object, if object is pleasant, if you like it, pleasant, sensual sensation arises. But how with the eyes, when we see objects, how can we gain pleasant, non-sensual sensation? The object is very pleasant and yet underlying tendency is not greed. That is called Niram is a sukha. Similarly, when you hear a sound, a smell, a smell and taste, a taste and touch something and arises thought in a mind, there will not be, even if it is pleasant, there will not be underlying tendency of greed. If it is unpleasant, not underlying tendency of hatred. If it is neither pleasant nor unpleasant, there will not be underlying tendency of confusion although they arise through our senses. And they are called niramisa, pleasant sensation, niramisa, oh, non-sensual, uh, uh, unpleasant sensation, and non-sensual, neither pleasant, no unpleasant sensation. What is that? How that can arise? And that is where the mindful meditator has to be very, very mindful and try to understand what it is. When we see an object up to this point, this is a very good point, a place to remember that, up to this point, what we have been doing, whenever we uh, experience something, we try to see impermanence of it unsatisfactoriness of it, selflessness of that object. When we come to feeling category, whenever we perceive an object, whenever eyes contact an object, immediately mindfulness arises to understand that this object is impermanent. The feeling arising from this object is impermanent. 
As soon as the feeling arises, we contemplate on the feeling. Although it is very pleasant, we contemplate on the feeling and then we will see this feeling is impermanent. And therefore, from the pleasant sensation, there, is, there arises insight into impermanence. And that is why through the eyes, although the pleasant sensation arises, that pleasant sensation is called non-sensual pleasant sensation. It is non-sensual because there we develop mindfulness to understand that this feeling that arose from this sensation is impermanent. The moment we see impermanence, that moment greed, greed does not become underlying tendency. Greed will not arise. And therefore that sensation is called sensation without underlying tendency of greed and therefore it is non-sensual sensation. Now this is how we have another 18 types of non-sensual sensation arising through our senses. What are the 18? Pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, arising through eyes, ears, nose, tongue and body, body and mind. Through six senses, these three types of feelings arise and therefore three times six, we have 18. Now we have 36 sensations, right? Did you get it? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> 18 types of sensual sensations and 18 types of non-sensual sensual sensations. That's how we got 36. Now how 36 become 108? <laughs> 108 is very easy, multiplied by 3. Past, present and future. All the past sensations arose like that and they either sensual uh, uh, sensations or non-sensual sensations. And therefore 36 becomes 108. Now mindful meditators, Buddha has instructed mindful meditator must understand there are grades of pleasure. All these are pleasure. One category is pleasant mundane or sensual sensation. Other category is non-sensual sensation. Now, then there is a, a sensual unpleasant sensation. You know that when you have uh, physical aches and pains, you want to, when you don't get something, you get upset and angry and suffering and you get something that you don't want, that you'll be disappointed uh, and so forth. That is called pleasant, uh, what do you call, sensual, uh, unpleasant sensation. When you want to, s when you see an object which you don't want to see, you have pain, right? When you hear a sound which you do not want to hear, you have pain. When you taste something that you don't want to have, then you have pain. Like so, through our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body and mind, unpleasant sensation arises. Naturally, we understand that. How can non-sensual, unpleasant sensation can arise. That is what is called spiritual unpleasant sensation. Niram is a dukkha. I said when you have a, a pleasant 
uh, non-sensual sensation, that is when we see impermanence of something, there arise all the object is pleasant. When we see that, there will not be uh, underlying tendency of greed, but there will be a pleasant sensation when we see object. What is that? How that pleasant sensation arises? Because we see the reality. By seeing the reality, we get, we become joyful and happy. That is what I mentioned even yesterday in my talk. Whenever we see impermanence, rising and falling of aggregates, there arises joy. That is called non-sensual pleasant sensation. When you see yato yato sammasati khandanang udayabhyang labhati piti pamojjang amatantang vijanatang I mentioned yesterday. That is, whenever we see the aggregates, form, feeling and so forth, rising and falling, then we understand this is the nature by understanding that there arises joy. That is a non-sensual pleasant sensation. When we hear a sound, when we smell something, when we taste something, when we think of something, when we touch something, the same experience we get. That is, they all are impermanent. They all rising and falling, appearing and disappearing. When we see this with wisdom, with wisdom we have to see, not superficially. When we see those things with wisdom, there arises happiness. That is called non-sensual pleasant sensation. Then how non-sensual unpleasant sensation arises? That is, whenever we, when we see things rising and falling, rising and falling, rising and falling, rising and falling, we want to get to the bottom of reality. For instance, somebody wants to uh, liberate oneself, seeing somebody keep practicing and practicing and practicing meditation, then one uh, feels like, gee, I like to spend all my life in meditation. I don't want to do any of this work. I don't want to cook, I don't want to clean, I don't want to attend to this and that. All I need is to sit and meditate. I want to attain liberation as quickly as possible. Meditators definitely will come to that kind of experience. At the same time, they feel so frustrated because they have to do this work. There is a frustration. That frustration is called unpleasant sensual sensations, feeling. It is unpleasant. Unpleasant because uh, on the one hand you experience great, uh, you have uh, spiritual urgency, great need to liberate yourself. But you cannot do it because so many other mandatory things are there to attend to. And uh, that is called unpleasant spiritual sensation or unpleasant uh, non-sensual sensation. It has there is no hatred there. There is no hatred, but there is an urgency. When that urgency arises, there is a pain, pain in the neck. <laughs> On the one hand, you have to do this work. On the other hand, you attain, you want to liberate yourself. That is called non-sensual, pleasant sensation. Then you can understand um, how sensual neither pleasant nor unpleasant sen sensation arises. That is, ordinarily when you try to gain something, you work very hard and you work and work and work, you cannot attain it. Then you said, just like uh, the the grape, sour, sour grapes, the story, the, you know the sour grape story? You try, 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 you cannot get it, then you said, what the heck, I don't need that. 
that is a non that is sensual and neither neither pleasant nor unpleasant sensation you want to get something and your underlying tendency is uh, confusion you don't know how to get it when to get it where to get it but you have just this urge to get it and there is confusion underlying tendency as underlying tendency but what is a spiritual neither pleasant nor unpleasant sensation it is called upekka equanimity equanimity that is those spiritual things are always positive always wholesome and wonderful that is we see a meditator particularly sees every tiny little part of our aggregates in the past so many years we have lived how many 30 40 50 60 70 years we have lived and all these years every day every moment whatever i experienced is gone disappeared my form changed feelings changed perception changed thoughts changed consciousness changed everything in the past changed they are changing right now while i'm talking my aggregates are changing and this will continue into the future my aggregates will change when i see these changes of the past present and future they are arises what is called sankar upekka jnana sankar upekka that is seeing im, uh, um, impermanence unsatisfactoriness of all the five aggregates they arises equanimity in our mind equanimous feeling that is called spiritual neither pleasant no unpleasant feeling neither pleasant no unpleasant feeling seeing in impermanence unsatisfactoriness and selflessness of the five aggregates there is no confusion there is wisdom insight and the feeling is neither pleasant no unpleasant so according to buddha's advice we are supposed to use this as you uh, use these feelings with insight whenever we experience um, sensual uh, pleasure of course we have tremendous amount of sensual pleasure that is what is called asada our life is not always suffering not always painful there are moments of pleasure joy in our life that is the the reward we get from this suffering occasional pleasure that is why we live we are not that all suffering all the time there are sparks of joy pleasure and we live for that but that pleasure relying on higher grade or degree of pleasure one should be able to let go of this low grade of pleasure this is the low grade of pleasure low degree of pleasure your low uh, uh, what do you call uh, quality that's not a great quality of pleasure those Uh, little birds having the little babies get pleasure so that pleasure even animal gets any living being can get that kind of pleasure having families having friends relatives properties good health and uh, 
movement, freedom to move here and there, do millions of things, people get pleasure. But the Buddha called them all that kind of pleasure that people enjoy are of low quality, <laughs> low quality pleasure. And relying on high quality pleasure, one should be able to let go of this low quality pleasure. What is the high quality pleasure? Pleasure we gain from letting go of that greed by attaining first jhana, gaining concentration. I don't know how many of you have gained concentration. Perhaps I, I believe some of you at some time or another might have got some degree of concentration. Just recall to your mind how you felt when you have gained some degree of concentration. How did you feel? You don't have to tell me. You just remember how you felt. Compare that pleasure, that happiness, that peace with the joy and happiness you get from excitement, going to party, eating a lot of good tasty food, listening to music, dancing, you know, running around, kissing, hugging and this. Compare this, <laughs> this peaceful happiness, joy, pleasure you get, compare with that. And this is called high degree, high quality of pleasure. So we must learn to let go of that low quality pleasure for the sake of high quality pleasure. That is the pleasure we gain from gaining concentration of first degree concentration, first level. When you compare the first level of concentration with the second level of concentration, the higher degree of concentration, the lower category of concentration is much low quality compared to second jhanic concentration. When you attain the second jhanic concentration, it is low quality compared to the third jhanic concentration. And when you attain the fourth jhana, third jhanic concentration is of low quality. When you attain the immaterial jhana, fourth material jhanic joy, uh, what you call happiness concentration is of low quality. When you attain the second of immaterial jhana, first immaterial jhanic attainment is of low quality. When you attain the third level of immaterial jhana, second level of immaterial jhana is low quality. When you attain the fourth level of immaterial jhana, third level of immaterial jhana quality is low quality. So, You can see the grades and degrees of feelings, all even in the neither pleasant nor non, uh, neither uh, perception nor non perception or the last stage of immaterial jhanic attainment, there is a feeling which is called upekha, equanimity. Then, Buddha said the there is still is a higher degree of pleasure. Buddha called them pleasure. That is attaining neither uh, attaining the stage of cessation of pain, of cessation of feeling and perception. That's called sanya vedita nirodha. Cessation of perception and feeling and, uh, and feeling. When you attain the perception and uh, cessation of perception and feeling, you have a great pleasure. 
but that can last seven days and there is a still higher degree of pleasure that is the attainment of total liberation from all kind of psychic irritants. So, mindful meditator should be able to distinguish one feeling from the other and see which is which gives deeper more qualitative pleasure. So, although this section seems to be very short, in this section the entire types of feelings we can bring into this and see how in meditation how some of these feelings arise. In meditation you experience pleasant sensual sensation and pleasant non-sensual sensual sensation as well. So, one should be able to make the distinction between what is sensual uh, pleasant sensation, what is non-sensual pleasant sensation. When non-sensual pleasant sensation, sensation arises there is no greed, no hatred, no delusion. It is very clear pure pleasantness. That is what we want to gain. When we, when we talk about uh, pain, suffering, impermanence and so forth, that understanding, that knowledge, that wisdom insight leads us to gain to experience that joy, pleasure, happiness which has no greed, hatred and delusion. When pleasure arises with greed, hatred and delusion, we end up in pain. Whenever the pleasure arises with greed, that pleasure with greed will end up in pain. Why? That pleasure changes when we have pleasure and we, we are naturally attached to it. We are attached to it because we have a greed. When we are attached to the pleasure, when the pleasure changes, we will be disappointed because of our greed. We want it, but it, it is taken away from us while we are enjoying the pleasure with greed, it disappears. Therefore, we end up in pain. But when we have pleasure without greed, even when the pleasure disappears, we will, not, we will not be disappointed because we enjoy the pleasure without greed, without attachment. It does not matter whether it stays or goes away. Either way is okay with us. In meditation, particularly, we have to understand the nature of this kind of feelings. Some meditators, uh, actually, feeling is very important uh, uh, part. Buddha said in Anguttara Nikaya, Vedana Samosarana Sabbe Dhamma. All dhammas converge in feelings. All dhammas converge in feelings. Every mental state arises with feeling. Every physical state arises with feeling. Every sankhara arises with feeling. Every conscious moment arises with feeling. Every experience arises with feeling. Everything that happens in the past, we recall with feeling. Everything that happens to us now, happens to us with feelings. Everything that happens to us will happen to us in future, will happen to us with feeling. Because of the feeling, we 
plan, we do, we commit, we anticipate all kind of things in this life. Because of feeling, we always look forward to something. We look forward to a pleasure. We never look forward to pain, although it comes naturally with the pleasure. Feeling is one quarter of the Buddha's teaching. In the Four Noble Truth, number one is suffering. In the Four Noble Truth, out of all the four, one is suffering. Suffering is feelings, whether it is pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, physical or psychological, it is a feeling. And therefore, Buddha said, all dhammas converge with in feelings. We want to do wholesome things in this life. Why? Because of the pleasant feeling. Why do we want to come for meditation? When you sit to meditate, some people don't want to get up. Why? Is it because of suffering? No. Of course, implication is suffering. But explication is pleasure. Implication is suffering because uh, you want to get rid of suffering. So you meditate. While meditating, you enjoy pleasure. So you stay with meditation. <laughs> so, in either case, because of the feeling, we meditate. We meditate to get rid of our dukkha, unsatisfactoriness, and we meditate to experience pleasure, happiness. So, when we meditate, we always have to look into the nature of our feelings, the way how feeling uh, motivates us to practice meditation. On the other hand, it is very easy to see impermanence in feelings. You can see when you have pain, you can see very clearly how impermanent feeling is. You, you sat with comfortable feeling, soon you find discomfort pain. You, are, you see impermanence. Every movement we make, everything we do has a feeling and that becomes more very, very conspicuous and in that we see impermanence. So, uh, when you, when uh, the section says Sukhang Vedanang Vediamano, Sukhang Vedanang Vediamiti Pajanati. The meditator, when he or she experiences pleasant sensation, he or she must know that I experience pleasant sensation. In that statement, uh, all this uh, sensual pleasant sensation, non sensual pleasant sensation, sensation arising from uh, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, sound, smell, taste, touch and thought, past, present and future, all these are included. All the past pleasant sensations related to sense senses uh, have been impermanent. What sensation arises now is impermanent. Future sensations will be impermanent. But the past sensation is just a memory, future sensation is just a imagination, but we experience the present sensation. And when we focus our mind on it, we can see, on the one hand we must identify whether this is pleasant uh, sensual sensation or pleasant non-sensual sensation. Similarly, unpleasant sensation, unpleasant sensual sensation, unpleasant non-sensual sensation. 
when unpleasant non-sensual sen sen sensation arises, one would not become angry, one rather would become encouraged, we'll have a spiritual urgency to accelerate the practice. So one will learn from that sensation to practice more intensely instead of getting discouraged. So friends, I think this will, uh, uh, this will be enough for today as Dhamma talk and uh, I hope uh, you will look at this uh, section once again more closely and you see how deep it is.